Hi there, I'm Colleen Adrian, and I want to talk to you today about how to transition your parenting with your co-parent to a more collaborative approach um, and avoid undermining them when you um, are currently having two different approaches. So I'm talking um, specifically today about um, a parent who may be trying to learn uh, connected parenting, um, because that's what I do. I teach, uh, I work with parents um, to learn connected parenting skills. So the parents I work with um, sometimes come to me and they say, hey, you know, I really, um, I really value the connected parenting and I see how much it's helping my child and it's calming their tantrums. And it really seems like the best approach for my child, but my partner isn't on board. What do I do about that? So um, you're right in assuming that consistency is important because it is, it helps reduce your child's anxiety um, because there's some predictability, there's consistency, they know what to expect. Um, and in situations where your sensitive spirited child is being triggered by, um, an, by a parenting approach by one parent that may be um, harsh, that may be too um, authoritarian or focused on um, focused more on their behavior rather than helping them calm first, um, then their behavior often gets worse uh, because um, those types of approaches with these really highly sensitive spirited kids, those kinds of approaches often literally trigger their uh, fight flight response uh, rather than comforting them. And when you're in fight flight, um, it's impossible to learn anything. So, um, except for fear, of course. So um, I recommend, I'm going to talk about two approaches, and one of them is um, related to what you'll do in the moment when it's happening and how you'll respond to both your child and your partner. And the other one is related to what how you can talk with your partner or co-parent uh, when you have a few moments alone. So first approach um, in the moment when your child is behaving inappropriately, maybe they're having a tantrum, maybe they hit their sibling. Um, the first thing you're going to do is um, after creating safety, of course, if there's um, a potential for more injury or uh, damage to occur with what's going on with your child. Um, after creating safety, you're going to acknowledge your child's feelings and do what you can in, in a moment or two to just meet your child's need. So say your daughter hit her younger brother, you're going to say, you know, I, you know, I can see you're really upset and you're really angry. I, I'm going to help you. I, I'm going to help you. Right. So that's kind of a comfort. I'm on your side kind of a message. Um, maybe your partner has already demanded uh, better behavior or reprimanded the child. Um, and so rather than, um, say something to dismiss that person, that partner's um, response or their approach. Um, you're going to say something that addresses their need and their intention as well. And that could be something, for an example, like, um, I can see that you really want Sarah to learn how to behave appropriately when she's angry with her brother and not hurt him. I can see how important that is to you. So, um, can you see um, the difference there? I, you know, um, I haven't criticized my partner. I haven't, I've spoken respectfully. I've acknowledged their intention and their, their good intention um, and probably what their deepest desire and their need is, right? Um, and, you know, you, you might even add something like, I, I know it's really important that, you know, you make sure that they're the young, you know, our younger child is safe, right? So something that acknowledges that you expect um, um, appreciate and value what their intention is, right? Um, and the other thing that you're trying to do here in a bigger um, scope of things is to actually um, acknowledge both of their feelings and help bring it down into a little bit more of a regulated state, okay? Um, so I mentioned there was kind of a two pronged approach. So the other one, when you have some time alone with your partner or your co parent, you can see if you can come up with some values that you both agree on. Um, so one value, for instance, might be, um, I value in our family that we family that we all um, speak kindly and respectfully to one another. Right. And then that 
becomes a value that you all trying to uh, that you're all trying to uphold, even when one or the other of you is um, dealing with a child who has misbehaved or who has you know behaved inappropriately. So it kind of sets, um, you know, sets the bar. I want to say, but um, sets an intention for how you want the environment in your family to be and how you're all going to what you're all going to do to contribute to that. Um, reminding them again that their perspective is important to you is a helpful and um, reminding them um, if they're open to it, hopefully, just maybe very briefly, that the current science shows that when the cognitive thinking part of the brain, it doesn't work when kids are upset, right? So in other words, when the reptilian brain is um, activated, the cognitive rational thinking part of the brain is offline right? So they need to be calm before they can learn. And that's what we're endeavoring to do when we calm and then we connect with them first. Um, last thing I want to say, I really, if you're thinking to yourself, this is, that sounds really hard to do. Uh, I know. Um, and I've heard, had some personal experience with this. And I just want to say that, um, you know, it, it can be helpful for transitioning to using a more connected approach and getting onto the same page and being more consistent in your approach, especially if your partner is willing to just um, let you try it a little bit without interfering and if they're able to see the difference in how your child responds. Um, but I also acknowledge that um, you might need some help from a coach or a counselor um, with this and it's really well worth the time. Uh, what you're doing when you're seeing and hearing and acknowledging both your child's feelings and situation and your partner's is you're actually really living the values that you want to see in your home, right? You're creating um, connection by and um, promoting calming by really um, acknowledging how they're feeling um, and what they need in the moment. So I hope that's helpful. Um, if you have some questions, pop them in the space below. Um, again, I'm Colleen Adrian. I'm a parent coach uh, and educator. And um, thanks for listening. <laughs>